will certainly be a blessing to you. And, and, and we hope and pray that it will certainly be um, life changing. So once again, we wanna welcome you uh, to the 15 Enemies of Marriage. I am joined here uh, by the vivacious lady old Pastor Olivia C.Q. Aiken. Um, just a little bit about us. We've been married 47 years. What a blessing. 47 years. That's right. Wherever you are, it's okay to make some noise. It's okay to clap your hands. But we have been married 47 years. We have been dating for over 60 years. I know it's how we don't look like it, but we have literally been dating for over 60 years and we have a lifetime of love and a lifetime of friendship together. So we are just excited that you have joined us um, here today. I do know that by now you should have um, gotten some emails from us. Um, you should have gotten our introduction. You should have gotten some tips on how to have a happy marriage, should have gotten our introduction. And the reason we did it like that was because when we start uh, the 15 enemies to marriage, you want to be able to jump right into it. Um, and so I'm gonna come back and say something about that in just a moment, but I need this uh, precious jewel. Amen, I, I need her to say something, to say hello, to tell you something to all of my friends. I can't see your comments right now, but I will see them a little later. But come on, Lady O, talk to us. Hello, everyone. I am so excited about tonight. I'm looking forward to us sharing some of our life experience, some knowledge, some wisdom, so that we can help you in your marriage as we all make our way. So we're excited tonight to talk about these 15 enemies to marriage. We want to put a stop to them tonight. And with your help and our help and God's help, we will do it. Amen. Well, God bless you. I, I, I do. I do want to say. I do want to say um, before we start that um, our marriage is not perfect, um, and our marriage is not perfect because we are not perfect. But we strive to first of all love God, and secondly to love each other and honor each other with um, respect. And when you can do that, and and you put God first, then and we have been blessed to make it um, through these years. And, and many of you have heard my testimony. I had a rough early going, um, but you but know, God. but God, but, but God. God, but God. <laughs> you know, so as we share tonight and as we talk, I really want you to understand um, that we are not perfect. Mm -hmm. And one thing that can happen tonight is you can gain from our experience. You can gain from our experience, but you do not have to experience our pain. So we want you to experience the victories, but you do not have to experience our pain. So we are grateful and we are thankful um, just to be here to talk about these 15 enemies to marriage. Now, I do want you to understand that um, if, if you look at the introduction, it goes all the way back to uh, the plan and, and how in the, uh, the Garden of Eden, you know, from the very beginning, Satan wanted to uh, destroy the union of, of marriage and how all of that happened in, in the garden. So um, marriages have been under attack uh, from the very beginning. So those are the things we want you to, to really grab. And hopefully tonight um, we'll just share some of uh, the knowledge we have and some of our experiences and uh, we want you to ask your questions. We do have a time where we will um, answer some questions to the very best of our ability, but we are grateful, we are thankful, and, uh, and we are certainly blessed. We, we have had a great life together, and, and that life is not ending. That life is just beginning, um, because in 47 years, um, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, we have, we have taught ourselves to evolve in, yes. in our marriage. We've taught ourselves to never allow our marriage to be stale, to never um, allow the same old, same old. Matter of fact, we don't even know how old we are. We, we just <laughs> in marriage, enjoying marriage. And, um, and we always talk about the fact that the first 25 years went by so fast. And, and the 25 year mark is special because that's the year that our kids sent us on our first trip to Jamaica. 
And um, we've been going ever since. We've been going ever since. <laughs> we went since. some other places. And we, Don't oh, tell we them about those. Well, I can't tell them those because mm. uh, we never know what young ears might be oh. missing. Okay, now I, what I need you to do tonight is to calm it down a little bit because oh. everybody can't handle your sassiness. Mm. But I can. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But we're going to have a great time. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day and this hour. Thank you for all the wonderful people um, that, that are tuned in and that will be tuned in, God. We, we certainly welcome them, God, yes, as they welcome yes. us uh, to their homes yes, and cars yes, and wherever they yes, might be. Yes. So, God, we come to shed some light on marriage and we come yes. up against these enemies, God. Yes. And for that, we thank you. We give your name glory. glory we glory, give your name glory, honor. Glory. And we give your name praise in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Let me remind you, let me start by saying that the things that we're going to talk about tonight, they are enemies to your marriage only because... If you don't handle them, handle them quickly, handle them properly, handle them as, as, as soon as possible, they evolve and manifest yes. into enemies. So that, that's why I want to talk about these things that have hurt marriages, that continue to hurt marriages, and they're only our enemies because we don't get right on them. So, Thank you. God bless you. And may heaven smile upon you is our prayer. I may also say that if we hit on one of these enemies that you are dealing with in your marriage, please send that note to us or a question to us tonight and we will try our best to answer it. This is how we can deal with helping you to stop the enemy. Amen. God bless you. Okay, well, baby, we're going we're gonna, to um, we're going to dive right in. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna dive right in. Um, enemy number one, communication. Enemy number one. Um, if you notice, the first problem, the first problem in the garden uh, of Eden uh, with Adam and Eve was communication, or should I say a lack of communication. And to this day, the most common complaint among married couples is the lack of communication. Now, whether you know it or not, but the lack of communication is a household killer. Yes. It's a household killer. But understand what communication is. Communication is the oxygen supply line to your marriage. In other words, without communication, your marriage dies. Yes. So here's what the enemy will do. The enemy will willfully and intentionally mm -hmm. cause you to argue, to stop talking, mm -hmm. to make you walk around in the house as if mm -hmm. you are strangers so you can die, so your relationship can die a slow death. Ah. It's almost like you're turning off your own oxygen. And you know what happens if you go with oxygen for too long, you know? Yeah, the, the brain becomes dead, mm. you know? And, and prior to the brain becoming dead, you begin gasping for mm. air, a, a choking kind of feeling. So without oxygen in the marriage, the same thing happens until the marriage dies. But my, I guess my question is, how can a marriage be gasping for air and go unnoticed? How can a husband and a wife literally be choking and not even know? It? You know, somebody ought to grab for some oxygen. Somebody ought to grab for the oxygen tank. You can live. Yes. So then what is communication? Very quickly. Communication is a process mm -hmm. that can be verbal or nonverbal, but it is a way of sharing information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a way of sharing feelings. Watch this. So everybody involved mm -hmm. can understand what is being conveyed. Mm -hmm. Listen, because you make a statement come does on, not mean on, come you communicate. Because you say something to me yeah. does not mean you communicate. Listen, communication is not only talking but it's listening. So there is communication, there's talking, and then there is feedback. Mm -hmm. And that is what completes the cycle. You talk, I listen, I give you feedback. Yeah. I talk, listen you fine. listen, yeah. and you give me feedback. Mm -hmm. So we got to understand that communication is so essential to the marriage because it's our oxygen. It's the way that we pass information. Now, what does it consist of? I'm, I'm glad you asked. 
Number one, communication consists of words. That's what you say. Mm -hmm. That's about 7% of your communication. Yes. And then there is tone that consists of 38% of your communication. That's how you say it. And, 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 and I know over the years, I've been, I've been guilty of some tone. But then watch this. 55% of your communication is body language. And that's what you do while you're talking to me. That's it right there. You, that's that's the head. That's the hand. Yeah. You know. So so all of that is a part of communication. Um, because we've talked about this before. You can say one thing out of your mouth. Yeah, but the way your body moves can say another thing. Because yes. So mm. so she can tell me yes, I'm okay with that with her mouth, but her body says something absolutely different. So it becomes an enemy to the marriage because it is non-existent. And the marriage ultimately begins to choke itself out. Now, the last component of communication is what I would call thought talk. So then what is thought talk? Thought talk is inner conversation that you have with yourself. The problem with thought talk is 99% of the time it's negative. So if you don't talk to me, guess what happens? I talk to myself. And when I talk to myself, it becomes a problem. And when it becomes a problem, because I'm the victim. So if you don't want me to have thought talk, then you need to talk to me. How do we fix that? There's a scripture in Proverbs chapter 20, verse five, that simply says this, counsel in the heart of a man is like deep waters, but a man of understanding draws it out. In other words, I'm responsible for going deep sea diving on, into Olivia's on, heart on, on. and getting to the root of the matter. Because I love her, she loves me, and above all, we want our marriage to last. So the thing that we have to do is kill the enemy of lack of communication. Because communication will choke out your dreams, it will choke out your desires, it will choke out your love for yes, each other, yes. and ultimately, communication will choke out your marriage. My God. Just like that. Just like that. So that's enemy, that's enemy number one. Mm -hmm. That's enemy number one. Okay, make sure you you you, you get that. You can always okay. get me for more for more notes. Enemy number two is oh, trying yes. <laughs> to change. Uh each other how many times and i've heard it in, in, in all of our years of counseling i've heard it i can fix what i don't like about it yeah i can fix what i don't like about her can i be honest and first of all tell those of you that are listening to me you can't change anyone i can't change anyone we can't even change each other and who can make the change? Who can the make the change? The only person can make the change is God. God is the only one the only that one. can make the change. Only we one. cannot change each other. So listen, listen, be honest, you know, and admit, first of all, mm -hmm. that everybody has something that they need to change. None of us are perfect and none of us have it all together. Now, there are some things about our mate that irks us. Mm -hmm. And there are some things about us that irks our mate. Matter of fact, there are some things about um, us that gets on each other's nerves. Mm -hmm. and, and guess what? The pandemic, oh the pandemic revealed <laughs> that most people who are married don't even like each other. Right. Don't even talk about love, but they don't even like each other. Husbands and wives didn't even want to be together. Yeah, because, you know, we were all stuck in the house together. So yes. instead of just going yes. to work in separate ways and then coming in in the evening and seeing each other, you were with each other all day, all night, and you got tired of each other because you didn't like each other. And the pandemic revealed that. Mm. So listen to this. Years have passed. The honeymoon is over. <laughs> and you find yourself trying to change your spouse. Oh. i got to say this. It's not uncommon for a spouse to try to change his or her partner. Mm -hmm. People do it all the time. In your best effort, mm. trying to change your spouse will feel like a personal invasion or a personal attack. If all of a sudden in our relationship, 
I began to tell Livia what I don't like about her. Mm -hmm. She she's not she is this the man that that said he loved me? She's going to take it as a as a personal attack. She's going to take it as a yeah. personal attack. And and the result is always retaliation or either withdrawal from the relationship. Mm -hmm. So if I come off wrong trying to change her, if I come off wrong trying to uh, 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 get her to, 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 to understand that there's some things about her that, that, that I want to change, she's not going to receive it like that. So it always results in she's going to get even with me. She's going to retaliate. Are you with me? There will always be something about everybody in the world that's going to annoy you. I know I got it going on, but guess what? I annoy some folks. It's some stuff about me that annoy people. I know it. I know it. But when people don't understand this, then they'll take it upon themselves to try to change each other. But you cannot change anyone. Now, let me say this to the married people. The person you are trying to change most likely is the same way they were when you married them. Yeah. Guess what? You were blinded yeah, by love. Yeah. I was in love. And, and you know what? Uh -huh. Come you on know, I, I bet they went to counseling, and even the counselor told them, said, you've got some issues here, but they felt that they could change because of love. Yeah. Turn on family, turn on friends, don't tell me nothing. I'm in love, I want to get married, and there is nothing that you can do about it. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this, listen to this. You cannot change people. You cannot change your spouse because it never works. Nah. When you force others to do something that you want them to do, but that they don't want to do, it will never produce real change. Mm. Listen to this. If you want to bring change in your life, change in your marriage, start here. Number one, change must be talked about. Yes, you got to. Number got two, to. change must be cultivated. You got to. Talk again. Oh. Number How three, you, change <laughs> must be planned. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just can't come in. You got to change all of a sudden. We have to we have to talk about you. Okay. I have to share my heart with you, and you have to share your heart with me. And we have to be honest. And we have to be honest. Okay. And and then we have to cultivate. We got to work with the soil. We got to work with the soil of the relationship. All right. And then we got to plan. When are we going to start this change? Mm -hmm. How are we going to do it? Amen. Now listen to this. Change is produced when a person decides for themselves that they want to change because it's better for the relationship. If a person don't want to change, they will never change. But it can't happen with God's help. Last but not least, last but not least, and I want everybody to get this. The easiest way to change a person in your relationship and in your marriage is by changing yourself. Let change start with you. It's always amazing mm -hmm. that we can see the other person's need to change. Come on, Lincoln. But we can never see our own need to change. So if you want to kill the mm -hmm. enemy in your marriage that's just trying to make everything disarray. Look at yourself mm. and let real change start yes. with you. Mm. All right. Is that all right? I like that. Okay. All right. Third, enemy number three, wow. heavy subject. Heavy subject. Um, I think for this enemy, you need the whole hand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It makes wrap, their wrap, whole wrap, thing. Wrap yeah. my hand. Wrap my hand. Because mm. this is the enemy of a lack of sexual intimacy a lack of sexual intimacy okay. all right now as important as needed couples over time in marriage lose interest in sex having no sex is not only his problem or her problem having no sex is everybody's problem you know why because sex creates oneness, sex creates unity, and then that means that a lack of sex creates separation. 
It's difficult for me to want to have sex when I'm emotionally disconnected from Lady O. Mm. It's difficult for Lady O to feel emotionally attached to me without having sexual intimacy. And that puts I'll us in a place I'll... where everyone has different uh, 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 sexual, everyone has different sexual needs, both in frequency and in type. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, baby, you help me if I'm wrong. Okay. Some people have love and sex as much as they can get it. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go, go, go. While others could live the rest of their life without. Now that's got to be saying. Oh, oh, go ahead. But, but regardless of what you want, most couples have a problem with what we call sexual compatibility. Oh, I want it, but you don't want it. You want it, but I don't want it. So we got to find that place. Listen to this. Let me help you. Let me help okay. you. If you ever watch the animal kingdom, mm -hmm. take a look at the animal kingdom. The animals only engage in sex when the female is fertile. Mm -hmm. Not so with us. Mm -hmm. The woman, listen to this. Come on. The woman is one of the only species that God has created on earth that experiences an orgasm. Mm -hmm. A dog don't do it. Mm -mm. A cow won't do it. But you do. Yes. And yes. I help. Somebody. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Are you with me? This is why mm -hmm. sexual intimacy yes. is so important. Yes. Yes. See, unlike the animals, humans were the only one designed Humans were the only one designed and created to enjoy sexual intimacy at any given time. Yes. Lunch, mm -hmm. breakfast. breakfast. I'm going to take more time on this one. Lunch, Love breakfast, it. dinner, mm -hmm. snack. Mm -hmm. In between snack. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Now, but intimacy, let me tell you this intimacy is a gift that goes beyond the feel good sensation. Yes. Here's yes. what intimacy, intimacy does. Mm -hmm. And this is why it needs to happen. It keeps us bound together. Mm -hmm. It brings us comfort. It nurtures peace. Yes. And it's a security blanket for our marriage. Yes. Sex is a way to romance one another to play together mm -hmm. and to share special moments. Yeah. It goes far beyond the physical connection. Mm -hmm. Love making creates and maintains a bond for husbands and wives, what we call that is so oh, deep. Yeah. It's deep within the soul. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. beyond the pleasure, uh, the procreation, but it deepens our relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's why God designed sex to be between a husband and a wife. Because he knew that once that, that monkey get out, it becomes an uncaged beast that must be contained. Yes, sir. Help me. So sex serves as a reminder of our longing to be connected to the creator. Yes. Now, here's what you got to understand about sex. Watch this now. Sex releases an inflammatory molecule. Come on, come on. That slows down the aging process. Come on. Ha -ba -sha -ba 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 -ba. Sex, Sex will improve your self-esteem. Notice how brother walk when he gets some. Ah. Notice how sister walk when she gets ah. some. Are you with me? Are you with me? I'm talking to married folk. Mm -hmm. So if they've been holding out on each other, they're missing all of us. Talk to me you somebody. You better be glad we came home Listen, tonight. But that's not all. That's not all. That's, that's not all. That's not okay. all. Uh, sex increases your commitment level. Sex produces a positive attitude. Mm -hmm. Sex reduces stress. Sex makes your skin better. Sex improves your, um, your immune system yeah. because it releases an Apostle, you're muted. You're muted.
I'm unmuted, I'm unmuted now. now. Well, somebody, well, somebody put, 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 tell me where, tell I, stopped me where I stopped at. That release orphans or something. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, now. Sex releases, sex releases an antibody, an antibody mm -hmm, mm -hmm, called, called immunoglobulin. Immuno yes, yes. It helps a it better, helps sleep. better sleep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, reduces it reduces the menstrual, the menstrual cramps. cramps. And for those and of you that go to the gym, 30 minutes, 30 of, minutes sex of sex will, 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 will burn, burn. 3.6 3. calories, calories per minute. Per minute. <laughs> God, I read, I read. Mm. That's now the That's Bishop now the Weight Loss Program. program. <laughs> so in other words, in other words, just tonight that they're, they're blessed, blessed, blessed. That, 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 that's how that's God, God created it. Within the man. Created it like that. Let the man be undefiled, be undefiled uh -huh. between uh -huh. the husband and the wife. And and now, your body is his body. And his body. Is your body. Is so your if body. I'm angry, I'm upset, I'm mad with you, I have it on right. You so still right. don't have a right. And so, and and so the lack the of lack sexual, sexual intimacy, intimacy becomes, becomes an enemy, an enemy to the matter. To the matter. Because folk because walk around folk mad. Walk around mm -hmm. mad. People are walking around, walking upset, around upset, upset with one another, with one another in the midst of the relationship. All these things that happen to me, I can't lose Absolutely. 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 Okay. There's a okay. million There's more million things I can say about that. I need to know if I'm echoing. Am I echoing? Am I echoing? There is an echo. Apostle, now you're muted again. Are there two devices on at the same time in the room? I believe there is. Okay, you're not echoing now and we can hear you. Thank you. Praise okay. the Lord. <laughs> Glory be. You're such a special person. Thank you so much. That's awesome. All right. Okay, are we there now? Mm hmm Okay, now, number four, emotional and sexual infidelity. Mm -hmm. The big problem. Mm -hmm. This is why this is an enemy to the marriage. Yes. Emotional and sexual infidelity. A common problem in many marriages mm -hmm. is for a couple to become emotionally distant. Mm -hmm. When that happens, it's likely that one or the other will start looking around. Mm -hmm. Sexual infidelity is cheating. Yes. Let's make that clear. It goes against the marriage vows and it defiles the marriage bed. Mm -hmm. Sexual infidelity, in most cases, um, it's not about love, no. but it's about challenge. Mm -hmm. It's about the sexual appetite it's about egos, mm -hmm. and it's about a feeling, uh, uh, feeling a lack mm -hmm. of sexual attention. Infidelity isn't just physical cheating, but infidelity is also emotional. Yes. Let's look at it. Emotional infidelity mm -hmm. can lead and will lead 99% of the time to sexual infidelity. That becomes destructive to the marriage. Emotional infidelity right now, as we speak, is at an all time high. Yes. Why? Yes. Because of technology, yes. because yeah. of social media, yes. because yes. of dating apps, yes. because of this app, because of, of, mm -hmm. of TikTok, because of Instagram mm -hmm. and every other gram. Yes. And, and, and they make it easy for a person to hide what they're doing. Mm -hmm. and whom they're doing it with. Mm -hmm. And so 90% of all affairs start in the emotions. Mm -hmm. And people think, well, I'm just talking, but it starts in the emotions. Your spouse should never hear another man or woman say something that you have not said. They should never hear 
somebody say something that you have not said. Mm -hmm. Whenever, listen to me, whenever it's easier for you to talk to someone other than your spouse, you, my friend, are headed toward emotional infidelity. Yeah. Are you with me? Now, one of the devil's latest tricks is this work husband, this work wife. That's a lie from the pits of hell. And those words shouldn't even be coming out of your mouth. Because what happens with that, what you're really saying is that this person very subtly fulfills some type of need, even if it's just an emotional need. So are you with me? So sexual and emotional infidelity can come in the form of somebody uh, with a broken heart, somebody that's in the midst of a bad or a painful relationship, um, abandonment, somebody who have suffered violence, somebody who have even lost resources. Mm -hmm. Emotional, stay with me. Emotional infidelity happens when you establish a close, intimate connection with somebody that's not your husband or your wife. And if you think the relationship you have with them is okay, then why don't everybody get in on the conversation? That's an indication. You can generally tell in uh, emotional infidelity apart from simple friendship mm -hmm. because of the interaction that's involved, the touching, mm -hmm. and all of those type things like that. Uh, if, if, if you're talking to somebody right now, other than your husband or other than your wife, and there is sexual tension or a rom romantic attraction, you know, and you're talking to them to where that conversation cannot be heard, you're headed down the wrong road. So you have to stop it while it, before it ever begins. Mm -hmm. If you're struggling mm -hmm. with uh, emotional infidelity, if you feel your mate is not paying enough attention to you, you have to voice that, but voice it in the right way. Don't voice it in a way to tear them down or to disrespect them, but voice it in such a way that they, that they understand as best as possible. If that doesn't work, then get yourself some help. Get somebody that you trust, but don't let everybody know. Listen to me. Do not let everyone know that you're struggling with emotional uh, infidelity. You see what I'm saying? Our, 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 our Lord have mercy. Our sexual infidelity. So, so be very, be very careful. It's a thin line. A lot of people do it because when you look at the church, some of our big leaders have, have gotten married, have changed women, have changed this, and they're still doing ministry. So people think it's okay, but it's not okay. So emotional and sexual infidelity becomes a problem. Listen to me, brothers, pay attention to your women. Women, pay attention to your men and do not deprive each other of the emotional need or of the sexual need because of what it leads to. Are you with me? God bless you, thank you so much. Enemy five, and I hope I'm coming through clear. <laughs> Enemy five, and this is money. Enemy five, fighting about money. Fight, fight, fighting about money. I often tell people that my wife married me <laughs> for my money. The problem was, I ain't, I ain't had no money. money. I ain't had no I money. I saw potential. You, thank you. Hey, she saw potential. Listen, on an average, couples fight about three to four times a month mm -hmm. about money. And, and one of the reasons that they fight about money is because of the difference of opinions in needs versus wants. What we need versus what I want, what I need versus what I want. And, and, and the disagreement, stay with me please, the disagreement normally and usually reflect your core values. Mm -hmm. So what are our core values? Your core values are what you were taught about money. Mm -hmm. 
are what you were not taught about money. It's how you viewed money. It's how your mama viewed money, how your daddy viewed money. Are you with me? It's how you saved money. It's how you spent money and then worried about the consequences later. You see, it, it, it's about, did you live or were you, did you witness people living beyond their means or beyond what they could actually afford? Well, when you got married, all of this stuff that was in your mind began to shape your core values. And, and, and it was dealing with everything that you understood or did not understand about money. Here's the thing. Many intimacies that we deal with, you know, in our relationship. But the main, one, one of the main intimacies that we never talk about is financial intimacy, you know, but yet it's at the top of our list and it, it impacts us every day, day in and day out. Mm -hmm. Financial intimacy deals with your household, but yet nobody is talking about money. And this is why it becomes an enemy to your marriage. If you are in a committed relationship, you owe it to each other to have an honest conversation about money. If you're getting ready, you need to get married. You need to have an honest conversation about your credit, about your spending habits, uh, 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 how you handle money. You can help yourself before you get in it. So what happens? The marriage comes together and, 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 and maybe some people are spenders. Mm -hmm. and, some are and others are savers. Mm -hmm. So what happens when a spender and a saver get together? You can see how that can be a problem. huh? You cannot be in a relationship and spend money without a plan. Mm -hmm. You cannot just buy what you want because that's what you wanted and see no responsibility in discussing it with your mate. You know, you buying stuff and hiding it in closets that so nobody won't know you got it. That's unfair. Our behaviors and our habits around money can be very different from our partners. Listen, here's why you got to really be open with money, because money is your future. You might want to buy a house. You might want to buy a car. You might want your children to go to college. But if you don't have a plan and everybody is just spending, now we're arguing every day because in, 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 instead, of, in, instead of paying bills, we buy TVs. We, we buying tennis shoes, we, 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 we going out to eat dinner. You have to know what your limitations are. Mm. Then you have to really be honest because listen to this, let me, I, I got to, I, I have to say it like this. You have to do what, does, what works best for you. Yeah. Some couples have joint accounts. Mm -hmm. Other couples have separate accounts. Mm -hmm. Some couples split the bills down the middle, but they don't plan on what happens after they done paid their part. They're always struggling with that. You pay the gas bill and light bill. I pay the water bill and the cable bill. And then for some reason, people got in their mind, whatever left, I can do what I want to do. No, baby, it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Then you have to look at it from this standpoint. Every spouse cannot be trusted to handle money. Hey, glory. <laughs> That's real. And you got to admit it. Yes. I don't have a problem. My wife is a much better saver than I am. My wife is a stickler for paying bills. She's a stickler for all of those things. But you have to do what works for you. If you're married to a person that, that's going to spend, I'm not going to let nobody put me outdoors because of their spending habits. That's right. I'm not going to, y'all better talk so, to me. And, and, and in that case, um, Apostle, if that is the case and your husband may be a spender or your wife may be a spender, you can have a joint checking account but there is also legal to have a separate account and you can call it the christmas club if you want to and begin to save but somebody has to save if you don't save then 
uh, the money problem can come into the sex problem, the communication problem, because if we're having difficulties about money, we're going to have difficulties in the bed. I don't care how much music you turn on and how you dim the lights. If there's no money, my children can't eat, then there's a problem. So money, it kind of uh, uh, is halfway of those uh, problems within a marriage. So you got to get that right first and then the rest can come but there's not it's nothing wrong it's hard for me a, it's hard for me to love you on an empty stomach and no roof and ain't no, no gas and no water ain't no lights on no, ain't no, ain't no, some no ain't right. some so, so listen, listen. and then you find yourself you're arguing thinking that you're arguing about money mm -hmm. but the argument is really now about something else yes. because your money begins now to deal with your future and it begins to deal with your children. Yes. So sit down, mm. come up with a plan, see who handles money best mm. and don't let anyone put you outdoors because they won't do right by money. They won't do right by money. Don't let money become an enemy to your marriage. Mm. Number six, selfishness. And I'm, I'm gonna, right. I don't wanna run out of time so I'm gonna go through them quickly. I think, I think we have to really, really labor on this one for a moment. Okay. Selfishness, number six. Maintaining harmony in the marriage has been difficult since Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Two people trying to go their own separate ways can never hope to experience the oneness of marriage that God intended. The tricky part about selfishness is that sometimes people are not even aware that they're selfish. Mm -hmm. And other times, watch come this, on, on. they are completely aware. So sometimes people know they're being selfish, other times they don't. Isaiah 53 and six said that we like sheep have all gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. That's what selfishness is. Selfishness is turning to your own way. Mm -hmm. It is the most dangerous threat so oneness in marriage, uh -huh. selfishness. It affects how we talk to each other. It affects how we divide responsibilities in the home. Mm -hmm. It affects how we resolve issues. It affects how we spend our time together. Selfishness is the great destroyer of a happy family life. Yes, yes. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The key here is to put your spouse's need ahead of your own expecting nothing in return. Getting married involves give and take rather than getting your own needs met all the time. If one spouse dictates the term of the marriage and won't compromise, can I tell you that that's a recipe for disaster. When a spouse makes choices and decisions that only benefit them, regardless of how uh, or should I say, regardless of considering how it affects the other spouse, mm. baby, that mm. is selfishness. selfishness. Are you with me? Selfishness is the first behavior that needs to go out the door when you get married. Why? Yeah. Because selfishness mm -hmm. will hinder me from becoming one with my spouse. Selfishness will push my spouse away. You see what I'm saying? When one partner is constantly indicating by their actions that the only one that matters to them is them, it will create a misconception yeah. in the mind of the other partner. And your partner will be thinking that they don't matter, that they can't put input into the relationship. A selfish partner mm. will make you think that you have to mind your own business. You in the marriage, mm -hmm. but mind your own business. Mm -hmm. Let me do me. Mm -hmm. There is no do me. Not when you're married. No, it's a do us. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Are you with me? Are you with me? But a selfish, a selfish partner will make you believe that you have no value in the relationship mm -hmm. and that you are not good enough to have a seat in family matters. And what this ultimately does is disrupts the balance of the marriage life. Because now one is the dictator 
And that can be him or her. Yeah. And the other becomes the slave. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? So when one spouse is so concerned and so consumed in their own self, turn into their own way, yeah. that they forget about the other person, that's a problem. Can I tell you that caring about each other's need is a basic requirement in marriage? Make decisions together. Yes. Don't do everything and make it about you. Focus on your partner. Apologize if you've been doing it before it gets worse. And then try to view things from your partner's point of view. Remember, you can only apologize so much. Am I talking to anybody? You, talk, you, you can only apologize so much. So, so understand this, understand this. If you lack consideration for your spouse, if you lack compassion for your spouse, don't tell nobody I said this, chances are you are probably selfish. Number seven, differences. Differences. A big part of dating is determining compatibility. Rarely will you date a person that you have nothing in common with. You might give them two times and be like, ah, that didn't work. We ain't got, we ain't got no compatibility. Now, being compatible does not mean being identical. Are you with me? Being compatible does not mean being identical. Your spouse's outlook on things is not necessarily wrong because they're different from you. Olivia's outlook on things is much different from mine. But we have to find a way to make our differences work for us and not work against us. So listen to this. Compatibility is not measured by how many things you have in common, mm -hmm. but it's gauged by how you resolve the things you don't have in common. Yes. Yeah. That's a mouthful right That's there. Mouthful. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not measured by what you have in common, but how you handle and resolve what you don't have, have in common. So again, when a couple, and I'm going back to these core values, mm -hmm. when a couple uh, have core value differences, it can cause problems. Because all marriages will have differences within their marriage simply because they're individuals and simply because they have grown up in different families under different parenting styles. Mm -hmm. Everybody grew up with, 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 with uh, different values, different moral systems, different goals. You see what I'm saying? And if, and, and if a couple if a husband and the wife cannot learn to adjust to the differences in each other, then you're going to have some major problems. Mm -hmm. One of them could be an introvert. Yeah. Another can be an extrovert. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 and watch this. When one is inner and one is, is, is extra, mm -hmm. you know, or, or outer, watch this. That's going to put tension on how you socialize. Because you like being around people mm -hmm. and he don't. Yeah. Or he like being around people and you don't. That's gonna create some tension. We gotta find a way of dealing with that. Well, uh, uh, Bishop, it's like this. Um, say for instance, a bird and a fish is in love. Mm -hmm. they, can, they, they both love each other, but they gotta work together on where they're gonna live. Absolutely. Because uh, 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 a bird can't live in the water. No. Mm -hmm. And a fish, you know, uh, can't a, a, a fish can't live on land. So sometimes we like bird and fish. Yeah. We but we got to find a way to make this love work. Lord have mercy. <laughs> we got to find a way to make this thing because work. Because we want to be together. We, we want to be together. So in other words, two people can mm -hmm. have uh, different ways of looking at the world. Mm -hmm. And it becomes difficult for them to understand each other based on the world that they're living in. So you have to handle it. So, but if your difference, if they're not handled swiftly, if they're not handled correctly, then they're gonna lead to, uh, to conflict. So let's talk about a few of them. Okay. The way you were brought up. Your mama brought you up different than my mom. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
Your mama said go in the corner. My mama told me up. Yeah. I'm saying that that creates a problem if we don't handle it when we have children. Mm -hmm. Then you have the birth order. And you really need to listen to this. Birth order means were you an only child? You know, mm -hmm. or did you have brothers and sisters? If you had brothers and sisters, were you the middle child, the last child, the first child? Most of the time, mama was stricter on the first child. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But the last child got away with anything. She was tired. She was tired. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But that had a whole lot to do with it because they carried that into the relationship. Okay? And then some are thinkers. They want to think through and plan everything. But then the other's like, I feel this. This is, I feel it. I feel it. I, I want to go home. I feel it. Okay? Yeah. Then you got the one that's organized. You know, we, we're going we're gonna to sit down. We're going we're gonna to write it out. Let me see. We got this. We're going to do the detail. And then the other one just say, man, we should just go for it. We, we should just go for it. Be like, hey, let's go to Disney World. You know what? Maybe that's a good idea. I think we can go about June. June? I, we, I, I done told the kids to get their stuff. We're going tomorrow. We can't go tomorrow. We you see, no but, money. but do you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? So you got to work through your differences. I wish I had. Let me see if I got my keys in here. Yes, I do. I do. Look, look, look. I, I got some. I got some. I got some keys here. You see what I'm saying? The, the keys are different. They open up different things. Yeah. They don't lose their uniqueness, and but I they still it. open and say. But watch this. But they're joined. Our ring is our commitment. And we make our commitment, then we got to find a law. Have mercy. I, and we're different. We got to find, we're different, but we got to find a way to make it work. Why? Because, because we joined, joined by one. Uh. ba 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 We are joined by a ring. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Because the ring mm. becomes my commitment. And my commitment said that I'm bound by the laws of God to work together. So if you don't handle your differences, your differences will handle you. We got to learn how to embrace our differences. God bless you. Number nine. Oh, number eight. Oh, oh yeah. Number eight. You try to skip eight. Love languages. Come on, work with it, bro. Did, did, work you, with did, you, did you hear my very way? Let me do it again. Love languages. Okay. One of my favorite writers, mm -hmm. Dr. Gary Chapman, he writes a book about the five languages of love and, and, and he defines the, the different ways that we communicate with each other. He, he says there are acts of love, mm -hmm. there's the touch, mm -hmm. there's quality time, mm -hmm. there's the giving of gifts, and then there are words of affirmation. In his book, he reminds us that that you have to be sure that you find out your spouse's language of love. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you can misinterpret it or mistaking it for something that it's not. You see what I'm saying? So because you don't have a mate that say, I love you out of their mouth, it does not mean that they don't love you. And he says that the five languages of love all say, I love you. Mm -hmm. let's, let's look at growing up. My daddy said, yeah. my daddy was, I love you. Or let them boys know I love them. But your dad, mm -hmm. he never said it. But, I knew him but you knew he loved you. And you knew he loved you based on what the first thing we're going to talk about is acts of love. love. Are you with me? Now, acts of love mm -hmm. is when you perform an action for the other. Mm -hmm. This can be cleaning. It can be cooking. It can be driving. It can be running errands. Mm -hmm. um, by doing that service to that person, mm -hmm. that shows how much they love you. So that's the act of love. Mm -hmm. Don't mistake. And, 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 and as people grow up, they, if they grew up like that, and they, go, they, they have to work into some of the other languages of love. But if that's the only way that they know how to express it, don't beat them to death because they don't know how to say, I love you. So number one is acts of service. Mm -hmm. And that becomes what I do to mm -hmm. show love, okay? And then there is the physical touch. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Now, this was my dad. Yeah. My daddy was a hugger. 
You see what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, uh, he, 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 I would see him all the time with my mom. He's cuddling. Yes. They holding him. My dad used to walk down the street. Him and my wife, him and my mama, should I say? Well, I do it with my wife. But him and my mama walk downtown holding hands. Yeah. You know, just walking, looking in the windows and all kind of stuff. You know, but 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 so that's what I saw. I grew up seeing the physical touch, the the, the cuddling and the hugging and the holding hands. You know, and a, a, just a simple act of of, of it, it seems like nothing. But if I walk up to my wife, I reaffirm, just putting my hand on her. I'm reaffirming to her. Big Dad is here, and Big Daddy got you. You see what I'm saying? And I don't have to say a word. It's just a physical touch, okay? And then there is quality time. That's a good one. Quality time. That's another language of love. That's giving undivided attention. And can I tell you that that people need quality time? There are spouses that crave alone time with their mate. And so the other might be mate might be saying, she just want to be on me all the time. She just want to be. Well, that that to her or to him, that could be their language of love. You know, I want to be, I, I, I want to be around you. I want to be holding, and then you out in public, I can't go, let me go. You know, and then she feels dishonored or he feels dishonored or disrespected. And they're just saying, I'm just trying to show that I love you. Are you with me? You, you, you see what I'm saying? I want to spend quality time with you. They want to catch up with their spouse. They want to have time to talk. They want to have time to bond. And here's the main thing. When you spend time with the person, with your spouse, that's setting priority. Yes, yes. That's saying you're important to me. Yeah. Watch this. You don't have to have money Come on. to give time. Come on. You can be broke, <laughs> but give yeah, time. time. Because guess what? If, if, if you get my time, you got my attention. Yeah. Hey, oh, hey go talk, talk, to talk. talk to me, somebody. Are you with me? Okay. The 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 the, the fourth language of love is the giving of gifts. Um, they don't they don't require large gifts or expensive gifts, but some people like to write notes, they uh uh uh, uh CDs and music and flowers, they leave a little a little cookie or pastry, you know, hot tamales, you know. I went to the store the other night and, 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 and got some got some and gummy bears and got some gummy bears, got some gummy bears and some and, and some hot tamales, and you would have thought that I gave her a million dollars, but she she that little girl in her came out. <laughs> He was like, Larry, Larry, he's my man. He can do nobody can. I was like, yes, sir. Talk to me, girl. But, 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 but watch this, watch this. You know, people feel validated. Listen to this. People feel validated when you take the time, spend money on them, or go to the store and pick out a gift for them. It doesn't have to cost a whole lot, but you took the time. And, and, and I can remember sometime, my wife very good at it. Sometime I went and she'd be like, you picked this out? Boy, boy, I, my chest just like, yeah, girl, <laughs> you know? So it's amazing. And the last one I want to close on is what we call the words of affirmation. They are verbal clues that express how much we care and how much you care about somebody. Your words of affirmation, they're your compliments. And every time you compliment her, baby, that dress look good on you. I like your hair. You see what I'm saying? Oh, that's my favorite outfit. It reaffirms and confirms inner love in an outer way. It expresses that. So remember the five languages of love, um, the acts of service, the touch, spending quality time, the giving of gifts, and last but not least, the words of affirmation. Okay? Now, number nine, and, and we, 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 we got to be, th this is definitely a trick of the devil. Yes, yes. This is boredom. When the relationship, uh, people feel bored in the relationship. Yeah. Now, as a human being, it's um, ultimately designed, you're going to be unsatisfied about some stuff. Sometimes you're going to be unsatisfied with everything because you're always going to want more. You're constantly evolving. 
You know, once you've been on a job for a long time, you want to do something mm -hmm. else. So you want to quit. Uh, you want to get promoted. Yeah. You know, you say, hey, I want to I want to do something else with myself. I want to go back to school. I want to switch careers. Mm -hmm. You know, you wear the same haircut all the time. You say, I want to do something different. I want my hair short. I want my hair long. I want my hair colored. I want my hair cut. You know, nobody wants to feel and look stale. The restaurant you used to love to go together, now you done ate everything and everything tastes the same. The one you used to rave about. You see what I'm saying? And 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 you used to go love certain stores and go look at it. You always, always something excited now that's played out. You tell yourself, I'm over this. You know, and once you get beyond the excitement of your marriage, once that honeymoon stage is over, once you the fun of possibly buying a house and filling the house with furniture. You settle yourself down in a comfortable routine. And how many know that routine can drive you insane? Yeah. Routine can lead people astray and it fills people's heart with boredom, you know, and they try to shake it off, but they just can't. And then people begin to question, am I the marrying kind? After all, I done got bored in this thing. You know, well, let me tell you, it does not mean that you're not the marrying kind and neither does it mean that you married the wrong person. Mm. What it means is you have to change your perspective and you have to take some action. Because exactly. remember, the devil loves tired people. Mm -hmm. He loves bored people. And mom and I used to say that an idle mind becomes the devil's workshop. So he's gonna play with your mind and if he defeats you, he's gonna do it on a battle of your mind. But every husband and every wife has to understand doing the same thing gets tiresome yeah and it's yeah. hard to make changes in an uncomfortable relationship mm -hmm. until you realize boy it's too late for this mm -hmm. so you have to do something new from time to time add some spark add some spice mm -hmm. to your relationship listen i can tell you from experience i've been married to this woman for 47 years and our life is an adventure Oh, yeah. You hear me when I tell you our life is an adventure because we try to be creative. We try to do different things. We try to go different places just because we want to keep our relationship fresh. And that's what you have to do. Don't allow your relationship to get bored. Take her out, man. Do something. It's not about money. You know, suggest something. Do something different from time to time. Guess what? Everybody wants to feel yeah. like they're on cloud nine because they're so in love. What if you can make every day a cloud nine moment? What, what, what if you can make every day a special feeling doing something from time to time? I have learned that I try to do the very best I can to make her happy. And, and her, her thing is to do the best she can to make me happy. And sometimes, man, she's on 100 and I'm on one. Sometimes, you know, and you got to work through all of that. But you have to do what needs to happen to keep it fresh. And, 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 and thank God for kids. Man, I'm tell you what, my girls be suggesting all kinds of stuff to their mama. And I'd be like, right on, sister. <laughs> right on. If you feel like you want, right on. Really. The girl suggested this. I'm like, boy, I love them girls. Like, y'all keep it coming. Y'all keep it coming. What y'all need? What y'all need? <laughs> but but we do that to keep it to keep it right. Here, here, here it is, baby. As time goes on, mm -hmm. newness and infatuation mm -hmm. wears off. Yeah. And as many uh, uh, couples uh, 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 fall into a slump, mm -hmm. their relationship stagnates. Mm -hmm and their life starts being boring. Ah. But it takes effort to try to keep love alive mm -hmm. and keep doing things exciting. That's why I encourage the brothers in this church, man, when anniversary time come, go, go somewhere, be gone. I don't need to see you. See, here's what I discovered. If my wife and I play hard, then we can do ministry hard. You see what I'm saying? So we play hard. I make sure that we enjoy one another's company. So when it comes down to ministry, she never ever feels that she's in competition with the church. And it has not happened in 40 plus years. Another it way to put it happened. too, Apostle, is that um, 
uh, you, to keep boredom away from your marriage, you got to light the fire. You got to keep it burning. And Come on, baby, light my fire. <laughs> what are the things now? Come on, baby, light my fire. Now, right now, wait till the session is over. But just take, for instance, and I love oxtails, and I know you do, and Apostle Love thinks season really good. A good seasoned pot of oxtails with good seasons and spices and uh, everything put in there is similar taste delicious, but a pot of oxtail, take the same oxtail, with no seasoning, with no spices, and you go to eat that, that's nasty. And so it tastes bad, it's awful, it doesn't taste good. Same is with your marriage. You have to put some spice in it, you got to put some seasoning in it, you got to light a fire, do some things. Come now, on! We're man. not saying do things or take trips that's going to cost you money yes, or buy things in it. You can take a walk in the park holding each mm -hmm. other's hand. Do something different, you know. Don't have it. But we took the one with the Georgia. We got on the uh, carousel and the little horsey rolled us, and you know, it was something different. We were freezing, you know. It was cold yeah. out there, but we cuddled we, we, together. We were all the grown ups on there, but we were we were. So you have we to do something there. to spice it up. Spice it up. Oh, feel me. I want to feel the fire. That's people, Bryson. Mm -hmm. Oh, they don't know that. Yeah. Okay, number 10, jealousy, jealousy. Jealousy is one of the most powerful emotions that we can feel in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful, jealousy can get completely out of, out of hand and do all kinds of harm. Mm -hmm. The problem is jealousy is hardwired, you know, into our survival mm -hmm. and it's triggered. Watch this, you need to get this part. It's triggered by the fear of mm -hmm. losing your mate. Okay. So some people are jealous because they think I'm going to be replaced. And so they have everybody mm -hmm. under suspicion. But all jealousy don't have to be bad when you focus it the right way. It can actually produce some positive results. But jealousy is often a reminder to a person who is jealous of what they can potentially lose. Mm -hmm. And being jealous, I'm telling you, can turn a marriage sour. You know, especially if the jealous feelings are unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Why are you jealous? Mm -hmm. Has she given you, has he given you any reason to be jealous? Person could be talking to anybody. You just come up there with an attitude, just bump up in there. You know, what? what, what, is, what is all that? Trust your man enough. Yes. Trust your woman mm -hmm. enough. You know, um... It was a couple of some, some, some guys in Georgia that was doing some things that I didn't like. And I mentioned it to Livia and her words to me was, I can handle them. You know, that's all I needed to hear. You know, I wasn't like, well, I'm gonna sit back and see what you are gonna do. My baby said, I can handle them. That was her words to say, you ain't got to worry about that. Let them do it again. I got this cup. And that was, that was the end of that. So see, a, a jealous person can be overbearing, mm -hmm. controlling, they, they, they have anger problems and, and, and they, 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 they make you, you know, reject, you know, reject them, reject the relationship. But all, all, all marriages have some kind of problems, but, it, but jealousy is something that you can fix. Jealousy is something that you can handle. If you're faced with a jealous spouse, if you find yourself feeling the tugs of jealousy, do two things. Number one, examine you. Yeah. Start with examining you. Ask yourself, why am I feeling like this? Why am I feeling, you know, jealous? Now you got a fine woman. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You got a fine woman. You're going to want somebody to look at. You don't want no woman nobody want to look at. So that, that's not the time to be jealous. That's just time to say, praise the Lord. I've Thank you, blessed. Jesus. I've been blessed. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I've been in situations where a man have looked at a woman and, and a woman that had nothing to do with it, but then she gets in trouble with the guy. Jealousy is a dangerous thing. Watch this. Watch this. Jealousy comes in different levels. Number one, there's legitimate jealousy. You see what I'm saying? And that's when a person just jealous because I want to guard my territory. Then there's occasional jealousy. You know, that's when a person is suspicious by something that has happened and they're uncomfortable 
when their mate is around certain people. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and, and then there is what I call chronic jealousy. Chronic jealousy is when you're just mad all the time, you, you threaten them, you, you, you're you a secret agent, you're insecure, you're feeling inadequate, uh, inferior to everybody until the point that it turns you into somebody else that's different than the person married. Mm -hmm. They live under a scrutiny, they live under a thumb and no matter what they do, they're always uncomfortable because that person that's jealous in the relationship blows things up out of proportion. And a lot of time, it's not so much that the person has done something for them to be jealous. The problem in many cases is that you are insecure. You don't know who you are in the relationship. And so you put it off on the other person. But then there are cases, there are cases when there is reason to be jealous. Mm -hmm. Now be careful. You know you got a jealous man. Don't be flirting with people. Don't, you know, don't, don't, don't. Yeah. It's certain things you, yeah. it's certain things you don't flame the fire on. Yes. You know, there are clothes that live near where in, in Jamaica that I ain't gonna catch up wearing around here in Kansas City. They can't handle it. They can't handle it. Plus, I'm gonna be mad. Anyway, are, are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? So, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm simply, I'm simply saying, be careful and make sure that you're not contributing, you know, to jealousy, especially when it comes to the opposite sex. You know, limit those kind of those kind of friends. If, if you know that she is 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 kind of unstable when it comes to a lot of other women, and 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 he's unstable when it comes to you dealing with men then you have to be able to handle those things. Now, again, in ministry, watch this now, in, in ministry, deal with a lot of people. Yes. Deal with a lot of people. And nothing that we do would, would happen correctly in ministry if Pastor O was a jealous type or if I was the jealous type. So you have to kill jealousy because jealousy is not of God. It's a feeling that comes from the very pits of hell. It does not come from God and it must, it, 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 it must be dealt with immediately. Yes. Now, everyone has a right to feel what they feel and they, their feelings ought to be talked about and dealt with. Mm -hmm. But when your feelings have been proven, that the person is not guilty of anything, mm -hmm. then accept the fact that the problem is not with them, that the problem could well lie with you. Okay? Number 11, how we doing? Number 11, keeping score, mm -hmm. keeping score. Um, and this is what we call tit for tat, mm -hmm. tit for tat. I did this for you, but you didn't do this for me. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't want to keep scoring. She, no, she, I, I got a book and she got a book. And every time I do something for you, I write it down. Every time you do something for me, I write it down. And at the end of the day, I got more marks on my side where I did stuff for you than you have over here where you did for me. That's a dangerous thing because keeping score, keeping score is rooted in pride. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Watch this. Go back with me to the garden to eat. God and Adam and Eve is in the garden yes. and they messed up. When God came on the scene, what Adam said, that woman, the Lord gave. What was that doing? Adam was keeping score. And Adam wanted God to know, I'm not the one that messed up. She did. You see what I'm saying? Who keeps scores on how many times he messed up and how many times she messed up? So keeping score can lead to uh, what we call discontent. Mm -hmm. You know, expecting your husband or your wife to never disappoint you or let you down, you know, that, 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 that's an unrealistic type, you know, type yeah. situation. So you don't wanna keep score because keeping score creates the uh, you against me, you know, type of mindset in a relationship. But instead, you know, you, you, you wanna be sure that whatever your hands find to do in the relationship, you do it because you love yes. them. You do it with your heart. You do it because of the grace of God 
that's in your life. So when you begin to keep score, you begin to do the relationship harm. And just let me give you a few. Not only does it create a, a you against me mindset, but keeping score begins to separate instead of cultivate, mm -hmm. you know, and it does not falter and uh, 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 foster, should I say, an atmosphere of love and forgiveness and growing together, but it pushes us apart. So if, if, if you buy candy for me, um, and the only reason you bought candy for me was to see if I was going to buy roses for you. So I didn't buy roses. When I got home, you was mad. Why? Because you was keeping score. But if you gave me that candy out of the goodness of your heart and you meant it from your heart, then you should not have to keep score with what I do for you, especially if I'm doing the best that I can. Here's another thing. Keeping score begins to blur your version, uh, your vision, should I say. It's easier when you keep in score to see the weaknesses and failures in your spouse, but ignore yours. Ah. Hmm? It's easy to see that. And in, why? Because I'm keeping yeah. score. Okay, you messed up Monday. Mm -hmm. Monday, I cooked dinner. He messed up Tuesday. And uh, Tuesday, I did his bath. He yeah. messed up Wednesday. Uh, and Wednesday, I had his slippers at the door. You know, yeah. you just, yeah. you, you, you keep adding to something. What that does is it builds a resentment in your spirit because now it's like I'm doing more for him than he does for me. And then keeping score limits your ability to forgive because to forgive, watch mm -hmm. this, because you set up in your mind how far you're going to go. Yeah. You know what you tell yourself? If he don't do something for me by the day, yeah. That's Lord it. have mercy. <laughs> I just stepped on about 20 toes right there. <laughs> if she don't do something for me by, by now, I'm not going to keep on doing good. Yeah, and Lord yeah. have mercy. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And then last but not least, keeping score fails the love test. Yeah. Because keeping score fosters conditional love instead of unconditional love. Mm. And it falls short of what God intended for you to have. Mm. Because if you truly love him, if you yeah. truly love her, then you are demonstrated by loving them the way that God loves you. And failing to love them mm. is failing to love God. Mm. So don't keep score. Do what you do out the goodness of your heart and let God do the rest. Okay, number 12, unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. A lot of couples get married because their expectations are realistic. But then after they go along, they find out now they're unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Expectations are strong beliefs that something will happen. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. An expectation is centered, you know, on my future, you know, and when stuff that I want to happen don't happen, how many know that disappointment arise. You see what I'm saying? So unfulfilled, uh, unrealistic expectations can be dangerous in a marriage. Some expect that their mate, watch this, will be able to fulfill all their deepest longings and needs and we're gonna live happily ever after and we're gonna ride off into the sunset. We're going to get yeah. the picket fence. We're yeah. going to get the dog. Yeah. We're going to have baseball, hot dogs, yeah. apple pie, and Chevrolet. But it don't happen quite mm -hmm. like that. And when things don't happen, mm -hmm. and the fact that I'm dealing with unrealistic expectations, now I begin to grow somber and sour, and I develop a bad taste in my mouth because this is not what I bargained for. Am I teaching the what? Yeah. Listen, having undue uh, 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 unrealistic expectations mm -hmm. put a burden on your marriage. Yes, yes. And it increases the likelihood that you will be unhappy. Mm -hmm. Early in your marriage, you didn't notice them because again, you was in love. Mm -hmm. You know, and you felt that your love would conquer all. And, you know, and we have this idea when we go into marriage, how we want things to turn out. You see what I'm saying? So, so for instance, a person got married and they said, boy, I'm going to have sex every day since I'm married. Mm -hmm. But then they forgot that they had kids, they work, they do chores, and folk get tired. 
And now I'm living in an un Lord have mercy, yeah. shut up, bacon. Yeah. I'm living in an un unrealistic, you know, expectation. You know, you want you want your wife to cook every day. You want your wife to have your meals ready like your mom did, but it just don't work out like that. Now you're dealing with another unrealistic expectation. And what happens when your expectations are not met in a relationship? You get frustrated and you get angry. Did you know that there are hundreds, possibly thousands of people walking around in their marriage that's angry and frustrated because of the unrealistic expectations. Things didn't work out like they thought it was gonna work out. Now they feel trapped and they're asking themselves, what in the world am I gonna do? Instead of things getting better, things are getting worse, but they forgot that they said for better or for worse. They forgot that they said for richer or for poor. They forgot that they yeah. say, kill death, do us talk. Mm. Unrealistic expectations. Mm. One of the biggest ones is that you feel that your spouse is responsible <laughs> for your happiness. Mm. The truth is you are responsible for your happiness. Yeah. Now your spouse have to do all they can mm -hmm. to make you happy but you are responsible for your own yes. happiness. You can't put that responsibility on anybody because it's unattainable. It's wrong for Libby to tell me to make her happy. Mm. She got to help me make mm. her happy. I, you, you see what I'm saying? We have to help each other, yeah. make each other happy, but I alone cannot make her happy. You get married and you say, you complete me. No, one person can't complete you. You are supposed to come into your marriage already whole. You got married because you were whole. You got married because you wanted to get married, not because you needed to get married. So if, if he completes you, what did you, if she completes you, did you come into the marriage a half of you? A half of you and a half of him cannot make a complete marriage. There must be a whole him and a whole you. Are you with me? So we get married because we desire to get married because we are whole already mm -hmm. in ourselves and only God can complete you. So you should never think that, you know, it's unrealistic to think that your spouse's life is going to evolve around you. What, is she not supposed to know anybody else? Mm -hmm. Are you supposed to be the only person that she knows, that he knows? No, that's unrealistic. They're going to meet people. Things are going to evolve. You have to be realistic because everybody is individuals. Your spouse shouldn't completely ignore you and not spend time with you, but it's okay for your spouse to have their own identity. It's unrealistic to think that they should do nothing else in life but take care of you. So when we deal with these unrealistic expectations. You know, we have to ask ourselves, what is, what is realistic about our relationship? And a lot of stuff that's unrealistic now, you overlooked it before you got into it. Yes. You ignored it. And now that you're in it, you have to ask God to help you. Because if, if these unrealistic uh, expectations fester, then you get bored. Mm -hmm. Then you know what that leads to. All right. Don't allow unrealistic expectations to destroy your marriage. I'm almost done. Power equity. Power equity. Power struggles mm -hmm. in a relationship mm -hmm. comes in a whole lot of forms from financial power mm -hmm. to parenting power. Mm -hmm. Power equity is who has the most power in the relationship, him or her. Who's going to make all of the decisions, him or her? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If one spouse makes more money than the other and the other one could be a stay-at-home parent, then it's automatically set up. You got the power. You bring home the money. You got the voice. And your voice will be the only voice that, that we listen to in this marriage. That creates an imbalance mm -hmm. because of money. And imbalances are common 
in marriage. Mm -hmm. Who has the decision power? That, that's it. You know, many times it's not equal. So that definitely causes problems mm -hmm. because one of the spouses could start feeling powerless over time. I don't have a voice. I don't exist in the marriage. You know, everything evolves around what he says or what she says. So marital equity, it refers to the degree of balance, the degree of power, the degree of influence. You see what I'm saying? It's measured by the indicator control. Who's the boss? Who makes the decision? Who's the most important? Who has the conflict resolution? Who decides what's right? Who decides what's wrong? Who decides if we go left? Who decides if we go right? You see what I'm saying? But when you got two people standing up to you, now you're fighting over power. There's no balance. You're fighting over power. There's no respect. You're fighting over power. There's no honor. You're fighting over power. When everything in your house uh, feels like a negotiation, yeah. when everything in your house feels like a battle, mm -hmm. then you're fighting for power. Yes. You're fighting for power. You know, whether it's about a baby who won't sleep, a budget that won't add up, a mess in the house, you know, if you got to argue over everything, you're arguing about power. You see what I'm saying? You, you got, you argue 30 minutes about who's going to take the kids to school. Come on. That's a battle for power. Are you with me? Power struggles are here to stay. You're going to have struggles in your relationship, but you balance it out. Olivia acknowledges that I'm the blessing channel for the house. She knows that God places me over the family, but God also knew when he gave me her that she was suitable for me. That she was suitable for me. And he made her as a help meet for me. And so areas that, that, that I need help in, and it doesn't have to be a dictatorship, but we can talk about it to keep power struggles from happening. And when you're confronted with power struggles, you know, people just feel like, I don't want to fight no more. So it's easier just to give up. And then that's when you get to the point, well, we're going to do whatever you say. <laughs> whatever you say. Folk get tired. Get tired of fighting and struggling. We are in this thing together. We win together. We lose together. And then you got to remember this too. If you're going to be the king of the castle, if you live by the sword, then you die by the sword. If you want it all yourself, but why not come together? Yes. Let's not struggle over power. I know who I am in the marriage. She knows who she is in the marriage. But come, let us come together and reason. Come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. So we come to, and, and, and when we can reason together, when I respect who she is and she yes, respect who yes. I am, when I honor who she is and she honors who I am, then we don't have to have uh, 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 power struggles in the church and we don't have to have power struggles in our family. We don't have to have power struggles in our relationship because we both want to do what's best for the marriage. Okay. Next to the last one, abuse. A lot of people don't want to talk about this. But one of the biggest problems that we have in marriage and have in the church is abuse. A lot of good Christian women are being abused. A lot of great Christian men are being abused. And it's just not men abusing women. But it's women also abusing men. Abuse comes in a lot of forms. The most one that we know how to talk about is physical abuse. You know, and that's what most people think of when they hear the word abuse. But it comes in many forms. And, and, and Pastor, uh, uh, we were talking earlier today, and we talked about the fact that there are some abuse that does not leave physical bruises, but they leave invisible scars, okay? So let's look at them. The, 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 one of the biggest ones 
is what we call abuse by control, control abuse. This is when you control your spouse's behavior. You control their friends, you control their finances, and you control their activities. You know, this is a sign of an abusive situation. Yes. They can't do anything without being directed by you. Because abusers, one of the first things they do is isolate their victims. Mm -hmm. And then watch this, they chip away mm -hmm. at their self-esteem until he or she becomes a shell mm -hmm. of the person they need to be and feel that the, the only way that they can survive is in this person's world. Yeah. The control abuse. Where you at? Who told you to go there? Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you to get there. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you you can do that. Who you with? Mm -hmm. Why are you talking? It's just a control. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and again, it just don't happen to women. But women do it to me, all right? And, and, and then there is the emotional abuse. And that's when, when, when a person plays guilt trips with your mind. That's when they criticize you. That's when they're always angry with you. They, they manipulate you to the point that they degrade you as a victim. And now you're feeling helpless and you're feeling hopeless. And yes, this happens in marriages and it happens in marriages in churches. Apostle, that's one of those uh, abuse where it doesn't show a scar mm -hmm. because I'm just hurting you and I'm doing things that I know is going to make you feel bad, hurt you, disappoint you. And I do it, but I'm playing with your mind. And when you do that with a person's mind, then you are doing, it's an abuse. But you don't see a scar. When they come out, mm -hmm. we can't tell they have a black eye. But I've been hit. And I've been hit in my heart. I've been hit in my mind. I've been hit in my self-esteem. And this is going on a lot. A whole lot. Um, and and you, can, you can tie emotional and mm -hmm. mental together. abuse together. Yes. But here's the thing. Emotional abuse is all about forced compliance. Yes. yes. I want to get you mm. to do something. Mm. So I'm going to degrade you. I'm going to talk mm. down to you. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to hurt him. I'm going to hurt her. And the purpose is to get you into a place of forced compliance. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play uh, uh, mind games. Mm. I'm going to attack your vulnerabilities. I'm going to threaten to leave you. Uh, I'm going to uh, withhold affection from you as a punishment. Are you with me? You see, uh, and repeat it, listen to me, repeated infidelity also falls under emotional abuse because you're messing with my mind. I thought you loved me. I thought you cared for me. I thought I was special. Emotional abuse. And that's all tied with mental abuse. Okay, then there's the verbal abuse. That's the constant demeaning, the insulting, the humiliating comments in public and in private. You know, and it is an incredibly damaging form of abuse. Um, this could include telling uh, Hurtful jokes um, about you, just to embarrass you. Uh, the fight, despite the fact that you're feeling uncomfortable, you ask me to stop, but I'm calling your names. I'm cursing you out. I'm insulting you. I'm questioning your insanity. I'm telling you that that what you think is ridiculous. That what you want to do is stupid. What you want to do is silly. And the sad thing about it is that kind of abuse is going on today, not only in the world, but in the church. And you know what, Apostle, also when you say verbal abuse, there's a nonverbal abuse. Absolutely. And that's when I'm mad with you and I can abuse you by not talking to you, walking away. I don't even want to be around you. I don't want to be around the children. I don't want to be around the dog. I don't want to be around the cat. I don't want to be around anybody. So what I do, I just give you the silent treatment. 
but I'm still playing with your mind. Playing with your mind. Playing with your mind. Playing with your mind. Then there's sexual abuse. Mm. You know, until recently, unwanted or unforced or, or unwanted sex or forced sex was in the marriage, but not was not considered rape. But now it is. Now it is. One stop means stop. Yeah. Sexual abuse includes unwanted sex. It includes withholding sex. It includes forced sex, uh, forcing a person uh, uh, into any kind of sexual activity that frightens them, that hurts them. You know, it's, it's also refusing to practice safe sex or uh, preventing a person from uh, 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 using birth control, you know, uh, uh, making decisions about pregnancy, about abortions, all of this stuff That's abuse. comes under sexual mm -hmm. abuse. And it's happening, brothers and sisters, in yes. marriages, and it's happening today. And then the one that we all know about, the physical abuse. Yeah. It's when your, your partner has done anything to intentionally hurt you. Mm. You know, when, when people try to hurt you, it's critical that you remove yourself and your children from him or her immediately. Mm -hmm. Don't allow anybody to hurt you. And it's never the intent of God for anybody to hurt you. In addition to beating you, choking you, kicking you, pinning you down, spitting on you, abandoning you, leaving you in the middle of nowhere in dangerous places, putting you in a car and driving at high speeds, half speeds to frighten you, putting you in a dangerous situation to intimidate you, refusing to get you help or withholding aid when you are hurt, to keep from getting you doctor's attention, you know, especially if you're pregnant, all of that is abuse. Mm -hmm. Apostle, I just want to say this before we move on to the last one. If you are find yourself in a place like that, and we were talking about abuse, and you want additional help, please reach out to us. You can inbox us, you can text us, you can call the church, tell them that you want to talk to you us. You can tonight. call us directly. Yeah, you need to let us know if you need help, and I promise you, we'll get you help. We'll do it. All right, we've covered 14, and the final one is accountability. One of the greatest things about being single is that you are accountable to nobody in terms of a romantic relationship. Mm -hmm. The problem arises when married people sometimes still believe that they're accountable to nobody. Once you're married, you are accountable to someone. Mm -hmm. You're accountable to your spouse, period. No exceptions. You are not single. You are married. If you and your spouse have goals, aspirations, and dreams of how to move forward in life, the only way to jointly achieve these things is to hold yourselves accountable to each other. Mm -hmm. Accountability is an action that speaks louder than your words. In relationships, actions just don't speak, but they scream. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You in, in a relationship, you have to be accountable. Are you with me? You can't be like some politicians and say one thing and do something else. Actions are your words. Actions is what you communicate and people are serious about the words you say. Oh yes. So in a marriage, the first thing you do is take personal accountability. And that's called taking responsibility for your own actions. It's one of the key components of marriage. It's one of the key components of any long-time relationship. And you have to ask yourself if you are living up to the standards that you set even for yourself and for your partner. You see what I'm saying? For your partner's expectation in a marriage. You know, so, so when you get into a marriage, you know, we are expecting certain things. Not out, we just want you to be accountable. You know, how can you be accountable to your boss and not be accountable to yourself? How can you be accountable to your coworkers and not be accountable to your spouse? How can you be accountable to your church and not be accountable to your marriage? 
You see what I'm saying? One of the most uh, overlooked dynamics of a successful marriage is what we call mutual accountability yes. between a husband and the wife. It's not just me. Now, now listen to this. In personal accountability, Olivia is responsible for her action. Mm -hmm. In personal accountability, I am responsible for my actions. Yes. But in our marriage, we have mutual accountability yes. where we both are responsible for our marriage. You see what I'm saying? So in a nutshell, mutual accountability requires openness, mm -hmm. right? It, it requires transparency mm -hmm. where we ain't hiding nothing. It requires what we call an authentic honesty. Mm -hmm. And it requires uh, genuine answerability, which means I got to answer whatever question she asked me and she has to answer what I asked her. When we are mutual accountable, then we, 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 we allow for total access mm -hmm. into each other's lives. In a lot of cases, husbands and wives that are not mutually accountable to one another, they put their relationship at risk. In other words, couples who are not mutually accountable to one another, you know, they have forgotten the biblical doctrine of one flesh. When we become one flesh, we take on mutual accountability. Are you with me? So be accountable to yourself before you attempt to hold anyone else accountable. Mm -hmm. And anything in your life and your marriage shall be possible. So do those couple of things. Number one, be accountable to yourself. Hold yourself to certain standards. Hold yourself to certain responsibilities. For you and your spouse do the same thing for herself. And then lastly, we have this mutual woe for the success of the relationship, for the success of the marriage, we hold each other accountable. Yes. And when we are mutual accountable, then we can both enjoy mutual mm -hmm. success. God bless you, God bless you. Thank you for, for being here with us through the 15 enemies to marriage. And now we're going, if we have any questions, we're going to oh, try to answer them as best we can uh, for any questions that, that we might have. Did we get any questions? No one came with any questions? Just in case they have a question. Now, where can I read the question? We're giving you time for it. Well, I, I, if nothing else, I, I hope and pray that you were that you were blessed. Um, you can always um, you can always uh, text us later if you don't have a question um, I, right now. I have a question. Okay. Hi, how are you? This was I'm really, really great. awesome. Um, <laughs> I wanted to know if it was possible that the people, you have um, the email addresses of um, the viewers, if we could be emailed the recording. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to, to take notes, but this was amazing. And I wanted to see if we could be sent the, the recording. Yes, we most certainly can. The uh, uh, Everything was recorded and we can email, we have everybody's email and we certainly can email the recording to you. That would be no problem at all. And thank you for, for tuning in. Okay, here's a question. How can we follow you or keep in contact with you and where are you guys located? Well, we're located right here in Kansas City. Our church is uh, Memorial Church International. Um, 11424 Hickman Mills um, in Kansas City, Missouri. And I hope y'all can put that on the screen um, if at all possible. I'm not sure if we can, but 11424 Hickman Mills Drive 
Um, you can call us at our church at 816-363-7939 or 816-363-7940. Uh, you can email me at Bishop Aiken, A-I-K-E-N, at me, M-E dot com. Bishop Aiken at me dot com. Pastor O's is, a, is very long, but it's Pastor Olivia CQ. Pastor Olivia CQ at sbcglobal.net. And, and you can email us and we can talk further, exchange information. All right, anything else? Do you offer one-on-one? -on -one? Yes. Um, the question is, do we offer one-on-one? -on -one? We most certainly do. We offer one-on-one, -on -one. we offer group. And some of the information that we sent, that was included, uh, some of the upcoming um, uh, marital classes that, that we have um, that, that's coming up. One I particularly like is one called Rounding the Bases. And that, that's one that we, we, we use the baseball diamond um, a, as a, a platform for marriage. And we want to get from first base, you know, to home. Um, but it, it, a lot of it is outlined in the, in the email information. But um, certainly, uh, you can also, uh, I'm going to give you my cell number is 816-820-7729, 816-820-7729. And, um, you know, we can always talk, you know, like that. And if you want to set up something uh, for a group or individual, we'll be more than happy to do so. And also for that person, I want to make sure that they have my uh, cell number also, Apostle, because the Lord is very heavy on my heart tonight that someone when we were dealing with the abuse. Uh, you don't know who you can trust. You don't know who you can talk to. And just like we've given you everything personal, I, that's our personal emails. That's Bishop's personal cell. My personal cell is similar to his. It's 816-519-7729. I do text, I call. So um, I want to put that out there tonight. My heart is very heavy in that area. So if you are listening and you, you uh, want to reach out, please, ma'am, please, sir, whoever you are, go ahead and do that. Again, 816-519-7729. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, we really... Uh, the, the goal the goal is to is to help and to be um, become um, advocates um, of marriage you know and to help and for those of you that don't know we we've been married 47 years 47 uh, great and wonderful years not perfect years but 47 great years and um, we've been dating for over 60 years. But I'm um, not telling my age. Yeah, we're not telling our age. But we've been dating for over 60 years. Um, my dad was the pastor. Her dad was the chairman of deacons. Um, they baptized us. They married us. Prayed for us as babies. For us as babies. Um, I put together her first bicycle. I think I brought her her first teddy bear. That's what she told me. Um, but we have been together all our life from, from nursery. From nursery to now, through 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 school, and and now through marriage, um, but that's it. This question is: Do you do couple? Is this field trips? Uh, most certainly, most most certainly, we do couple field trips. You call us and let us know what you what you have going on, and we just want to be real. We want to talk straight. Too, before before the pandemic, we had. Uh, marriage conferences that we did oh okay before the <laughs> pandemic we had marriage uh, conferences and um they were in person and you know we don't want to go too long without doing this because we know that marriage is very important and so we wanted to make sure we came before you doing something like this but we will continue to have in-person conference. We'll have our single conference. We'll have all kinds of conferences uh, that we can help the body of Christ and we can help people because if we can't help you in your marriage, then your marriage will fail. And that's why we came with the 15 enemies tonight to give us headlight on things that sometimes um, cause problems in our marriage. So we want to do that. So we will be coming back with uh, more like this and we'll do some in-person. Well, I, I was going to clarify something. 
Uh, do we do a couple field trips? Um, yes. Matter of fact, uh, one of the one of the plans was um, to just kind of um, we had a lot of things planned yeah. before uh, <laughs> pandemic. But one of the things was to um, just go with couples to random places and just you know sit down and and talk. We we, we want to put marriage. And we, we're still going to do it, but we want to put marriage and we're open for, listen, we, we want marriages to get better. Um, uh, we want to help with marriage. We want to help with your marriage. Your marriage does not have to fail. You can win at your marriage. Do you have info for Spanish speaking people? Um, I have sons that speak fluent Spanish and, and, daughters. and daughters, sons and daughters, yes. and we can translate anything yes. uh, that we do and I do so many, so much work with Spanish speaking people until I, I use a lot of apps that translate uh, everything that I happen. say so we can happen. make it happen. And yes, there are more sessions coming. coming. Yes. Number one, there is a training session that's coming that will uh, help people who want to help um, couples uh, in marriage. Okay, let me say this. Uh, we have one coming up called Living in the Key of Marriage. Living in the Key of Marriage. You and don't want to miss. <laughs> right. This <laughs> seminar focuses on the most important keys that a couple needs to use and master in order to unlock closed doors and closed minds in a marriage for every day struggles and traditional and, and cookie cutter thinking. You know, we're just trying to get you through it so it can help you. Then we have the one uh, called Building Blocks to a Healthier Marriage. That is on the way. And this one recognizes that couples are responsible for becoming master builders within their marriage. You are responsible for building your marriage. I told you about the one called Rounding the Basis to a Better Marriage. In that seminar, you know, it just uses uh, the game of baseball to help you process through moving from one base and ultimately getting home. And then the, the one I'm really excited about is the marriage mentor course, the marriage mentor course. And that one will probably be over a couple of days, but that one is designed to give, designed to give you the tools that you need to help other couples and ultimately do what we do to help couples. And we take you through this training and, and we give you a, a certification you know, that just say, hey, you have been through so many hours. And and uh, of course, we we sit with with you through one of your counselings and and kind of monitor you and score you and grade you and give you some pointers. But um, that's that's something that's that's very um, exciting. And yes, we do do couple marriage counselling, group marriage counselling and uh, individual marriage counselling. So those are just some of the things. And this question said, when are you all coming to Houston to do a retreat? And I'm going to tell you very soon. <laughs> we, are, we are on our way. So after this session, you can text me tonight or call me tonight, and we're going to get some information, and I promise you we'll make it happen. We will make it happen. We will make it happen. And we've got a staff of married and singles that will come and help us make it happen. That's absolutely right. And we do another conference called um, uh, Help Me. Uh, oh, yeah. my my marriage is on life support. Yeah. Okay. Well, God bless you. Thank you for tuning um, in on on tonight. We hope that something has been said and done to empower you. We love you with the love of God. Um, I want to say a special thank you to our staff on tonight um, that put it all together, our admin staff and our broadcast staff and our sound ministry, our armor bearers. Amen. Thank you to the children that were so quiet. They're in the other room. They didn't hear some of that stuff Pastor O was saying. Amen. But uh, it has been a great, great blessing. We love you with the love of God. Feel free. Please. Feel free to contact us Please. either tonight or later on. We love to hear from you. Um, if you feel led, um, just just do us a quick, hey, I was helped by it, how, how we were helping. Yeah. We're going to need all, use all of those type things to help us with future advertisement. God bless you. We love you. Father, we thank you for this night. I thank you that I have been privileged to be yes, yes, yes. married to a most wonderful woman of God. 
Thank you, God. A young lady that I love with all my heart and all my soul. God, and I pray that everybody under the sound of my voice yes, would yes. experience the land of marriage yes, yes. like we have been able to. God, we thank you. Thank you. God, we bless you. God, yes, we praise yes. you. And God, we honor you. Yes. And Father, we give you praise for this night. And God, we pray that somebody will, will go back and do work on their marriage and yes, understand yes. that their marriage is worth fighting for. Yes. We honor you today. And by faith, we, we count it all done and we count it all joy in Jesus' name. Amen. amen Listen, amen. I don't know if you heard my, my, my um, what do we call it? My rendition of So Much to Give. We played it on the uh, earlier before things started. And I think we can play it again. Can we do it again? Or is it too late? Um, we're going to play it going off. Listen to it if you would like to. God bless you. We love you. And I'm going to ask LaMonica if she would come and just, just 